This is the third in a series of lectures on an introduction to exterior differential systems. In this lecture we're going to consider the notion of tableau for computing the characters of an exterior differential system. So where are we going with this? A tableau is a matrix which encodes an exterior differential system so that we can see the characters at least after carrying out some linear algebra steps. So we want to be able to calculate characters more easily and this gives us a tool to do that. It's a computational recipe. It's not part of the fundamental theory of exterior differential systems. In this lecture, we'll write omega 1, 2 to mean omega 1, wedge omega 2, and so on, um, which would be ambiguous if we had more than nine omegas, but we'll never have so many omegas in these examples and in, in these lectures. So it's not dangerous to write in this convenient notation um, omega 1, 2, again, to mean omega 1, wedge omega 2, and so on for other differential forms. Before we can consider what is a, a tableau, we want to at least look at an example. The definition of tableau is very complicated. This will be the most difficult lecture probably that we'll encounter. Um, but uh, we, we can start off with just writing what one example might look like in a simple case. Now, if we go back to our example of triply orthogonal webs, which we covered in the previous lecture, we can, um, we can write out explicitly what it looks like. I didn't actually do that. I left that for, for you to do. And it's, uh, it's not difficult. You plugged in the structure equations of Euclidean space, and you came up with some description of the triply orthogonal webs exterior differential system as being generated by three three forms. And the various three forms look something like this. The omegas are exactly the same as they were in that lecture. These pi's correspond to somehow to some levi civita connection one forms in the previous lecture. Um, so you can work out the details and check and see that in some way of writing it, the um, for some basis of, of these pi's, the, um, the exterior differential system looks like three forms that look like this. Omega 1, 2, edge omega 3, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we have a simple description of them. And again, I won't worry about writing out the details. They're done in the lecture notes, and you can do them yourself from, last, from the last lecture. So how do we rewrite this in an example of a tableau? Again, I haven't said what the definition of a tableau is. I just want to give an example before giving a precise definition to give you some sense of what a tableau might look like. A tableau for this system looks like this. We have pi's in a matrix, and we have them wedged with omegas. So we've pulled all the pi's over to the left-hand side and all the omegas over to the right-hand side. The three different three forms we wrote down correspond to the three rows. Each of the, each of the differential forms in our exterior differential system is going to be a row in our tableau. Um, so we have some basis for our exterior differential system, and we write each basis element as a row of the tableau, the tableau will always have one forms in a matrix of pi's, and then it'll be wedged with a column of omegas. The omegas are, in this case, for example, are two forms. None of them are one forms. There are just two forms. Omega 1, 2 is omega 1 wedge omega 2. It's a two form. So we have a, a, a matrix of pi's, each of which is a one form, and that matrix is actually itself called the tableau or tableau matrix. And it's wedged with a column of omegas, which could be forms of any degree. In this case, there are two forms. And that's how we've rewritten the exterior differential system as a matrix. And that's the general picture we want to have. We want to somehow factor out some one forms, in this case the pi's, into a column of into a matrix of pi's and wedged with a column of omegas, uh, leaving the, the remaining factors as omegas. Okay, so how do we do this in general? In all of our examples, we'll be able to carry out this kind of operation. So, um, so Tableau is a useful, a useful tool. Suppose we start with an exterior differential system, I on a manifold M, and we want to construct a Tableau for it. The first thing we're going to do is to pick a co-framing. What's a co-framing? Let's say what's a co-framing. So a co-framing means a collection of one forms. In this case, there'll be theta A's, omega I's, pi alpha's. So theta's, omega's, and pi's, they're one forms on the manifold M, and they form a basis at every point for every cotangent space of M. Now you might only be able to do this locally, picking a co-framing, but in our examples we'll actually be always able to do it globally. 
So you pick a co-framing, thetas, omegas, and pi's, but it has to be subject to some rules, and the only rule it actually has to be subject to uh, is really that the thetas are a basis for the one forms in the ideal um, exterior differential system. For the moment, that'll be our only rule that we'll have to worry about. Uh, the other omegas and pi's can then be arbitrary. Um, so what we're going to do is to take this co-framing and try and write the exterior differential system in it. So we can take every differential form and write it. Because it's a co-framing, it spans the, the co-framing actually writes a basis for each cotangent space. And so the wedge products of co-frame elements will form a basis for all the differential forms at every point. So every differential form will be a multiple of those basis elements. So modulo the thetas, we can pick some basis for the two forms, some basis for the three forms, and so on. Now, uh, in principle, it's possible that the two forms, the three forms, that they change rank from point to point. We won't worry about that. That's dealt with again in the lecture notes, but we'll just, for, for this lecture, just to suppose that, as in our examples, that there are always is some, some choice of, of basis for the two forms, a basis for the three forms, and so on. And we put them down in a column of thetas, okay, bar thetas. Uh, as, um, I have to apologize to the Greeks uh, for this, but we're going to uh, distinguish theta and var theta as if they were sort of different letters. So the theta is the is in our basis of of one forms, and then the two forms and three forms and so on from our from our exterior differential system. We're writing in this as these uh, squiggly var thetas, which we think of as sort of a different letter. Um, so we make a column vector just like we did in our example for triply tipl orthogonal webs, well, we make a column vector of all the various wedge products of the omegas. We don't need to write down all the possible wedge products. And, uh, and um, there's actually one further rule that I haven't written down that is sort of appearing here, is that there should be only some number p of omegas, and the number p should really be the number that we're looking for, uh, the, the dimension of integral element we're looking for. But nevertheless, we're, uh, it's not really essential. What we do here is we write down a column vector which has all the omegas that appear. So when I say appear, of course, or occur, they, these are the omegas that, that occur when we write out all those var thetas in our basis. We wrote it out in a basis of thetas, omegas, and pi's, but we're working modulo the thetas. We only need to worry, therefore, about writing the, the, the var thetas as multiples of omegas and pi's. And whichever omegas show up, we'll write them in this column. Okay, so they'll appear as omega 1, omega 2, and so on, various wedge products, omega 1, 2, and so on, and so forth. So the, all, the, all the wedge products that occur, for example, for our typically orthogonal uh, webs, we only really needed omega 1, 2, omega 1, 3, and omega 2, 3. Now, we're going to actually put in some horizontal lines and organize these a bit more in the, um, in the way in which they appear. So the, the, the first bunch that appear are just going to be the ones that just involve omega 1, and then the ones that involve only omega 1 and 2, um, and so on and so forth. So we want to have, uh, have them organized like this into what I'll call grades. Um, so grade K consists of rows that have only factors of omega 1 through K, and they must have an omega k factor. So in this example, we had omega 1 is the only thing that can ever occur in grade 1. In grade 2, the only possibilities are omega 2 and omega 1, 2. It doesn't matter within a grade what order you write them in. That's not important. All that really matters is we make sure that we draw these horizontal lines that organize this thing into grades. Once we, the grades become obvious, at some point we'll stop drawing the horizontal lines. For the moment I'm drawing them, eventually I may not remember to draw them because they'll become more or less obvious. So, uh, so that's how we can write them in grades. We create grades for the omegas, and uh, we have this, this column matrix of various differential forms of various degrees organized in grades according to the last factor, and they're written alphabetically wedged. So now we write out that the var thetas, that's the whole column of var thetas of various uh, two forms, three forms, and so on from our system, uh, are expressed as somehow wedge products. They're wedge products of what I've called here var pi, which is going to be the tableau matrix, um, and wedged with the omegas, plus some dot 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 factors. So there's some dot 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 terms that I'm not that I'm not specifying yet. Uh, what's going on here though? The var pi matrix is supposed to be our tableau matrix. It's supposed to consist of linear combinations of pi's, and then we have our omega column, and then we have dot dot dots. So var pi is called a tableau. It's a matrix of one forms, and those one forms are only allowed to be linear combinations of pi's. 
it's then wedged with the various omegas. So the terms that can appear in var pi wedge omega are exactly the terms that have one pi factor in each term, and then, uh, and then nothing but omegas. What about the dot dot dots? The dot 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 should include what it will call the torsion terms. Those are terms that have only omegas, no pi's. Right? Every term in, var, in each var theta can be expressed as some combinations of omegas and pi's wedged together. If it has only one pi, we put it into the tableau. If it has no pi's, we put it in the torsion. And if it has two or more pi's, it goes into the nonlinearity, the terms with more than one pi. So pi, wedge pi, wedge pi, wedge pi, wedge omega, wedge omega. It could have three pi's, four pi's, and some omegas. But as long as it has two or more pi's somewhere in it, in its wedge product, then uh, it goes in the nonlinearity. So we've organized that all of the, the two forms, three forms, and so on, and uh, forming a basis for all those higher degree forms in our exterior differential system are written as wedge products of uh, pi's with omegas in a tableau, and then these dot, dot, dots, the torsion terms, pure omegas, and then the nonlinearity terms, terms with more than one pi. Let's see if we can do it in an example. We go back to triply orthogonal webs. This is a very simple example. We've got our var pi tableau matrix with its various pi's in it, wedged with our column of omegas. And we've indicated here the grades. Note that there's no omega 1. We don't need anything of grade 1. Nothing of grade 1 ever appears. So grade 1 is actually empty in this example. We only have grade 2 and then grade 3. Now those are the, the various rows of omegas. When we look down, then we can see the grade 2, and then we see the two entries in grade 3. I'm going to then write vertical bars in the, in the tableau matrix, which correspond to those. So because uh, there's no grade 1, there should be no, in, in the omegas, there should be no grade 1 in the var pi matrix, in the tableau matrix. There's only one entry in the, among the omegas, it's in grade 2, so there should be only one column among the, the tableau and the tableau matrix that is considered to be grade 2. And then we have grade 3 being two entries in the omegas, and so there should be two columns that are called grade 3 in the tableau matrix. So the tableau matrix is divided up into an empty grade 1, one column of grade 2, and two columns of grade 3. Okay, there's no torsion. And there's no nonlinearity, so we've only got to worry about the, the tableau matrix wedge with the omegas in this example, and that's very common. That's very very common in exterior differential systems. Torsion is not all that all that common, and nonlinearity is not all that common. So we have an empty grade one. Um, we have grade two as a row in the omegas, and therefore we have a matching grade two column in the var pi matrix, and we have grade three. Uh, which is the last two rows in the omegas, and therefore the last two columns in the in the uh, tableau matrix. Okay, so that's a triply orthogonal web system viewed from the point of view of tableau. Let's look at a more complicated example than 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 the triply orthogonal webs, and this is really just written more or less at random. Suppose we have some one forms theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. We have a 2 form which has some various terms in thetas, omegas, and pi's, and a 3 form which has some thetas, omegas, and pi's for some co-framing on some manifold. Now that's the co-framing, so it has 1, 2, 3 thetas, 1, 2, 3 omegas, 1, 2, 3 pi's, there's 9 elements. So this must be a 9-dimensional manifold. And on this 9-dimensional manifold we've got uh, an exterior differential system which is uh, which has a basis at each point of one forms, three one forms, a single two form, and a single three form. Now we mod out by the one forms because we compute tableau with one forms modded out. So in other words, we drop the one forms from any term where they show up. So the thetas are going to disappear. Mod the thetas, there are no one forms. Mod the thetas, the two form simplifies a little bit. We drop any thetas that show up in it. And we could do that with any of the forms that we saw. We drop any term that has the one forms in the system in it. They disappear. And then we are left with this very simple expression. And the three form, note that we've taken the nonlinearity, this pi 1 wedge pi 2 wedge pi 3. So the first term in the three form up at the top becomes at the bottom uh, in, uh, absorbed into the dot dot dots over on the right hand side. So the nonlinearity we've just pushed into the dot dot dots. 
Um, so now we can see it becomes a bit simpler, and now we want to organize that into a, into a Tableau matrix. Let's take a look at it as a Tableau matrix. If we work modulo the thetas, we've got the var thetas are the two form and the three form from the uh, exterior differential system written as the rows of a matrix. And then we'll, over on the right hand side we put the nonlinearity term in. We don't really need it, it could just be thought of as some dot dot dots. We can rewrite our matrix as uh, rather simply as a bunch of pi's wedged with a bunch of omegas, right? So we've got a tableau matrix of pi's with just pure pi's in it, and then wedged with a column of omegas. And then off to the right again is the nonlinearity. Now we've, uh, we want to start counting characters. So this is how we can organize a tableau. You can see the grades. There's a gray, single column of grade 1, two columns of grade 2, and there are three columns of grade 3. So we've got an organized uh, tableau set up with our grades marked out with, with the vertical lines. And we put the nonlinearity off to the side. Let's forget about everything except the tableau matrix. Let's just focus on that tableau matrix and see how we can count characters. Here's the tableau matrix, just without any of the omegas and without any of the nonlinearity. Um, we can then associate to this some kind of count. What I want to do is to count these pi's. I first count all the pi's that are linear dependent in the first grade. And then I, calculate, I, f I find additional choices of pi's to make uh, a basis of pi's for the first two grades. So uh, I've got a grade, with, uh, a 1, and in that grade 1 I've got a basis consisting of pi 1. And then for grades 1 and 2 put together, I've got a basis of pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. Um, these blue highlighted entries I've referred to as polars. We color each polar each entry which is linearly independent of all entries of an earlier grade or higher up or to the left in the same grade. So pi 1 is independent of anything else that's ever appeared. And as we read down, imagine reading each grade, grade by grade, you, you go across the grades uh, over starting at the left and going rightward grade by grade, and each grade you read like a book. You read like a page of a book. You go across uh, along to the right, starting on the upper left, you go across to the right and then down a line and across to the right and down a line and so on. You look for entries that are for, that are linear independent of any entry you've ever seen so far. So when I hit that pi 3 entry, I've been reading down, down the page of that grade. I read pi 2, 0, 0, pi 3, and I saw that that pi 3 was independent of anything that had ever been seen before. Then when you go to grade 3 in this example, you've hit a pi 3, but you've already seen that, and so on and so forth. Everything is something you've already seen before, so there are no polars in grade 3 because they've all showed up before. Somehow, linear combinations of those have already appeared. So uh, we read down um, line by line, starting in the first grade, reading across the grade, not, not across the whole width of the tableau, just across the width of the first grade, and then going down, 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 reading across, reading, going down, reading across, going down, like reading a page, and then we go on to the next grade as if it were the next page, and so on. In this way we generate polars, and we can color them. In, in the lecture notes, they're colored. I don't think anyone else has ever colored them that I remember, um, so this is not a standard approach uh, to color them, but I think it may make it a little easier to spot them. So uh, we then count how many polars there are in each grade. There's one polar in the first grade, and there are two polars in the second grade, and there are no polars in the third grade. Those are going to be the characters of the tableau. S1, S2, and S3. In this case, S1 is 1 because there's one polar there. There are two polars in the second grade. S2 is 2, and there are no polars in the third grade. S3 is 0. So here we have it, S1, S2, S3, 1, 2, 0. We colored the polars, and these are our characters. We have to be a bit careful, though. These are the characters of the tableau, or I think I call them in the notes, uh, naive characters. There's still a bit of a problem with them. They may not correspond to what we want them to be. We recall there was a problem when we defined characters, that they were defined for a generic flag, a generic integral flag. They weren't defined for just any integral flag. And the same problem arises here. Let's calculate characters in a sim simple, simple example. Okay, so we'll use this, um, this simple example where we only have a single two-form. 
var theta is this two form. There are no theta one forms. There's no one forms to deal with, just a single two form. And so we write it as a multiples, uh, a multiple of omegas and pi's, right? We write it as a combination of pi's wedged omegas. In this example, I've written the, I've taken the pi's to be the dy's and the omegas to be the dx's. So each term dx wedged dy has to be rewritten as minus dy wedged dx. So we get minus the dy's wedged the dx's we get minus the pi's which the omegas. You can see then the grades are simply each column is a grade because each omega is generating a different grade each column is a grade so I haven't written in the horizontal or vertical bars in this example but you can see the grades right away and you can see that there's one pi in each grade and that gives us our characters and those are exactly the characters we calculated in the very first lecture in this series you get exactly the right values for the characters s1 s2 and so on are all equal to one so this is giving us the right characters then we can also consider what what whether or not this is rel uh, how the torsion relates to whether or not these characters are are giving us integral manifolds um, so when you think about the torsion, a torsion is the pure omega terms, which means if I set the, all the thetas to zero and all the pi's to zero, torsion terms will still be there. They won't disappear. They're exactly the terms that don't die off when you set theta and pi to zero. But if some things, if something in our tableau doesn't die off, it, we haven't had got an integral element. It hasn't gone to zero on our on our on, on our integral element. So if you write these ejs by setting the thetas and pi's to zero and then various of the omegas to zero, the sort of high omegas, j plus one and so on, then you're, you're looking at torsion uh, being just the multiples of omega one to j uh, wedged together in various ways. And those are the possible torsion terms. And that torsion will vanish just when that flag is integral. Okay, so if we have a particular choice of thetas, omegas, and pi's, we can write down this particular flag, and the torsion vanishes just when this particular flag is integral. At each point, this will define a flag for us, and if the, tor the torsion vanishes, then that's integral, and vice versa. On the other hand, um, what if there's some integral flag somewhere else? What if that isn't integral, but somebody else is? If there's an integral flag somewhere out there, we can always adapt the choice of thetas, omegas, and pi's because we got to pick the omegas and pi's as we liked. So we could pick the omegas and pi's so that those particular linear equations cut out the given integral flag. So if we're given integral flag ej, we can always pick omegas and pi's, thetas, omegas, and pi's to make that the expression for ej. And in that case, then torsion will vanish. So torsion vanishes just exactly when that particular flag is integral. But if you don't find that that flag is integral, you, and you find some other flag is integral, then you can arrange torsion to vanish somehow by a change of basis. How do we do that in practice? How do we actually change the basis so that we get a basis in which the, in which the torsion disappears? Let's take a look at an example that has torsion and see what we have to do. So in this example, we have two two forms called var theta one and var theta two. These two two forms are then expressed somehow as pi's wedged omegas plus some torsion term omega one two, which is highlighted in red here. How do we get rid of that? Somehow we have to kill off that term, but we get to change basis. If we want to change the basis so that that term will disappear, we're going to need to somehow make use of the fact there's a pi wedge omega 1 in the same row that'll kill that off. And we do this very simply. We just let pi 1 prime be pi 1 plus omega 2. We get to pick a new basis of pi primes instead of pi's. I'll write them as uh, pi primes for a notation that's, uh, that, that's pretty close to the pi's. And then we can plug that in and see what happens. And we find that in terms of the new pi prime one instead of pi one, the torsion's disappeared. This is called absorbing torsion. And this is generally going, generally going to work if you have a nearby enough integral element, then it's going to have to be possible to somehow rewrite the pi's so that it will, it will become uh, absorbed, the torsion will absorb. So this is a process called absorbing torsion. We rewrite with new pi's so that somehow we pull the omegas, the torsion omegas, inward. It may not be possible. Sometimes there are no integral elements for some exterior differential systems, and then the torsion will survive, whatever you do. 
So it may or may not be possible to change the pies to pull the torsion in among the pies, to absorb the torsion. In this case, we've absorbed the omega-1-2 torsion term into the pies, and we're left with no torsion. So that's a general process of absorbing torsion. It is really just linear algebra, finding suitable linear combinations of pies with omegas added to them so that we pull the torsion in among the pies. There's another process which is more important here, uh, which we have to pay attention to. Uh, it's much more subtle, which is the problem of borrowing. We have to try and figure out how to get the characters to work out the way we want them to to get the generic integral element so we get the right characters. Let's take a look at triply orthogonal webs again. There's a problem here. These were the characters we calculated for triply orthogonal webs. We calculated S2 is 1 and S3 is 2. Okay, you can see the polars right there. The bad news is that those are not the characters that we found in our previous lecture. In the last lecture, we found different characters. These are wrong. And that's one reason why I've called them naive characters, or characters of the tableau rather than of the exterior differential system. They aren't the right characters. There's something wrong with them. And the reason is intuitively clear. We've used just a particular choice of omegas and pi's here, which gives us a particular choice of integral flag. But we know that the correct values for characters have to be the characters not of an arbitrary integral flag, but of the generic integral flag. So we have to somehow perturb this integral flag to make it generic. And that's not so clear. How do you do that? Let's try changing the basis of omegas. We'll let omega prime 1 be omega 1, omega prime 2 be omega 2, but omega prime 3 will be this complicated combination of omega 1, 2, and 3. What happens when we do that? And if we do the linear algebra and compute out the effect on the tableau, we obtain this simple expression all the pies have now forced their way into grade 2. Well, the grade 3 pies, pi 2 and pi 1, were in grade 3. They've managed to slide their way back into grade 2. And that'll change the characters. Now there are three polars in grade 2 and no polars in grade 3. So we've managed to change the characters. And these are the correct characters. These are the ones that we, what we found in the last lecture. Let me remind you that, of course, we didn't really find them in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we left them as an exercise. Uh, so uh, if you did that exercise, you can check that these are the right values for the characters. And you can see that all we've had to do is somehow manipulate the omegas among one another. And we've been able to push back the pies, push them from grade 3 back to grade 2, where they belong. And so we've corrected the characters by suitably pulling the pies backwards to the left uh, through the tableau. When can we do that and why can we do that? Let's think about how this works in general. For an arbitrary exterior differential system written with some tableau, the generic omega i's will have the largest possible s1 because the, the change of omega i's can change us to any integral element, any integral flag inside the given integral element. So once we have an integral element, we'll be able to, to wiggle around the omega i's and get any integral flag inside it to show up, and the generic integral flag is going to be the one we're looking for. The generic will have the largest S1, and then subject to that S1, it'll of course also have the largest possible S2, and so on and so forth. So it won't necessarily have the largest possible S2 among all of them, but among all the ones with a given S1, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is to borrow by adding multiples of omegas to other omegas. Let's see what happens when you do that. Imagine we have some enormous exterior differential system. I won't write one out, but just imagine some huge thing. And we borrow by adding some small multiple of omega 4 to omega 5. So you picture a huge exterior differential system, enormously many pi's and omegas, a giant tableau. And somewhere in there we found some, uh, some polar, and we're not happy with it. So we add a little bit of omega 4 to omega 5, some small multiple. Then a polar in grade 5 tries to push its way backward into grade 4. Why is that? Because the omega 5 we had before now has a little omega 4 added to it, which means that that polar pi isn't wedged with, with uh, omega 5 uh, anymore. It's wedged with a, with, a, with a multiple of omega 4 added to omega 5, which means it has a little bit of omega 4 multiple in it. And that will push it back to try and make it go uh, back a little bit into grade 4 because it'll now have some small multiple of 
uh, of its polar wedged with forms from 1 to 4, and that are for, therefore in grade 4. It'll get a small multiple of that polar will go backwards. Now that might not work to change the characters. If there's already a polar in that grade 4 spot that it tries to push into, when the polar tries to push itself backward, if it finds it's already got a polar, it's only adding a small multiple of a different polar, or the same polar, it won't change the linear dependence. Things will remain linear dependent when you add small linearly dependent things to them. So it won't change the, 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 the fact that that's a polar until so you have the same pattern of polars. So it may not actually do anything. If there's already a polar sitting there, it may not work. Or if that row uh, of the tableau were to represent, say, a 6 form or a 7 form or something like that, you can only factor a 6 form into 1 pi and then at least five omegas, right? You could have, as because it has to wedge together to give you six, you could have a pi and then you'd have five omegas. But if you're gonna have five omegas and they're gonna be alphabetically ordered, then the lowest possibility you could have is omegas one to five. And so you can't slide a six form into grades lower than five. It has to sit in grade five and more. So the polars of a six form sit in grades five and higher. And that we saw in our triply orthogonal web example. In our triply orthogonal web example, all of the forms were three forms. That means that you need at least two omegas and a pi. One pi, two omegas to make a three form. And that means you can't go back any earlier than grade two to get the two omegas and one pi to make the three form. So in our example, we were able to slide all of our polars back to grade two, but we couldn't slide them back to grade one. Because they represented three forms, they had to have a single pi in them, they had to be represented as two omegas wedged together, so they couldn't go back earlier than grade two. And that's exactly where they went. They all went back to grade two. So what we try to do is to borrow multiples of omegas to other omegas, and this is often quite complicated, the effect on the tableau, but it, what it'll do is to slide the polars back if, if it can. And so we get this kind of borrowing of polars from higher grades back into lower grades when it's possible. And this will push them back to the left as far as they can go. And it'll therefore alter the characters to their generic values. We know those are the generic values because we're just taking generic choices of omegas, which will give us the generic uh, set of integral, fl uh, integral flag on which those omegas are, 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 are describing various equations, setting various omegas to zero. So, uh, so it'll be guaranteed to give us the generic characters, and therefore we'll be able to, uh, to, to be, make sure that we count correctly. There is a minor point, though, which is dealt with in the lecture notes, that if you want to absorb torsion, can you, still can you first absorb torsion and then, um, and then borrow? Uh, and you're, are you getting the right values for the characters? If you absorb torsion first and then borrow, are you still absorbing torsion? That's a point that's dealt with in the lecture notes, which you can think about. So summarizing this picture, what we can do is to count characters by eye. We can see what the values of characters are because we see these highlighted little blue spots, which are the polars. And we can usually see whether or not we can slide them over to the left. And when we can slide them over to the left, we'll alter the characters appropriately. So we can picture what the characters look like by putting them in the tableau, and we can picture the freedom to move them around so that we can actually arrange that they represent the correct generic values for characters. And this way, we can often, by eye, calculate out whether or not an exterior torrential system has involutive integral elements. And this makes it possible to calculate by eye often uh, the the existence of integral manifolds. Um, so once again, our slogan is that we want to use only linear algebra to somehow check the existence of solutions of systems of partial differential equations. And what we're finding is that this is often possible to do by eye, by just looking at some kind of tableau matrix.